All right, boys, we're finally here with the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC, and you guys know the first car I had to try to modify was the brand new Anis 300R, and that's exactly what I've done. So today I'm going to show you guys the drift build that I have on this car that I think works the best. Um, yeah, we're going to go through the ins and the outs of it and review it and all that stuff, so let's get into it. So pulling into the mod shop, again, we are at the LS car meet, so that way we can equip the low grip tires because I think this car is well deserving of them. I think without them, the car just feels a little bit too snappy, and for the best drifting experience, you're going to want to run them. First off for the armor, we're going to do the maximum armor upgrade. So um, the reason behind this is because this car cannot be stanced with a weapon. You can't stance it through your interaction menu. There's really no reason you'd have to intentionally damage this car. So in the event of that, you're going to want to maximize the armor upgrade so that way it's more resistant to bumps and things like that. Um, so that's why I did the armor upgrade, as you guys can see there. Um, for all the aesthetic stuff, I'm going to skip over that. It's kind of up to you and your own personal preference, but let me know if you guys do want to see what parts I choose in future builds. But anyways, for brakes, with most of my drift builds, I just leave the brake stock, as you guys can see there. Um, then engine, we're going to do the EMS upgrade level 4, as you guys can see, max it out all the way. Um, then none of this stuff really impacts performance, no neons, no livery, or the livery I did, but that doesn't impact anything. Um, none of this stuff really affects anything when it comes to driftability. Spoiler, because we are running low grips on this build, you actually can run a spoiler and it really won't have that big of an effect. So if you guys do want to run one, for the sake of just keeping it clean, because I'm not really sure how I feel about the white there, I actually left the spoiler off my build, but if you throw it on, it really won't affect much because you're running low grips. So the spoiler doesn't really matter. Um, suspension, I haven't really found out yet. Um, and I don't really know in terms of the handling whether or not the suspension adds grip, but based on testing different suspension levels, it doesn't really affect handling all that much. And if anything, it felt a bit smoother on the race suspension, so I would run the race suspension, keep it as low as possible. And plus, obviously, the stance is the best, so that's awesome. Sure Next up for the transmission, we are going to max this out. Want to do the race transmission so that way it's as most, you know, as responsive as possible for mid drive speed boost and all that stuff. And then the turbo, we are going to do the turbo as well. Um, and then for the wheels, uh, the wheel type, I chose the pure business wheels in the track category, but wheel type really doesn't have that much of an effect. But what it does is in the tires, so tire design, that's up to you. But in tire enhancements, I would recommend running the low grip tires. So that's really about it. That's about all you'll need for the drift build. Now that I think back on it, I think I will throw on that ducktail. I think it just looks really cool. Um, with the Anis Texer. So I'm going to throw that on. Again, it really won't affect anything with driftability. So that's really about everything for the build. Honestly, I was expecting this car to have a bit more customization. It's kind of depressing that it doesn't, but um, I, who knows? Maybe some of the other cars in this DLC will make up for that. But yeah, I'm going to switch to my controller camera and then we'll actually show you how this car drifts now. All right, so we've got the controller camera on screen right now, and let's go ahead and take this car outside the LS car meet and try to drift it. And this thing, I must say, is surprisingly smooth. After testing it a little bit before recording this, this thing is actually surprisingly smooth, so let's get into it. Oh yeah. This feels honestly a lot like the Euros if you guys have drifted that car. Um, a little grippy, a little snappy, um, and the short wheelbase does make it a little bit more snappy than most cars. Um, but this car is very light, so you will need to rely a lot more on the mid-drive speed boost, as you guys will see in the controller camera. Um, I am putting a little bit more work into the mid-drive speed boost. This car is very light, so it doesn't have a lot of momentum to kind of carry it through the turns and things like that. Um, so that it is something you'll kind of have to be mindful of when you try drifting this thing. Let's get a good line here. Nice. Nice little precision there through the guard booth. Ooh, and there's that little bit of oversteer. So again, um, shorter wheelbase, more powerful car, more snappy. It is going to be a little bit more prone to oversteer than understeer. So let's actually try re uh, doing a uh, reverse entry so we can see how recoverable it is. Yeah, it's going to be a little tough. Hard to recover because of that really short wheelbase once again. But overall, like getting into like a normal groove with like normal drifts, you'll see a little bit just how snappy it is based on my steering inputs, just how much those front wheels are moving just to kind of keep the car sideways. But 
it is still really smooth and power wise this thing's perfect power wise if it were maybe a little bit stiffer and maybe there's a little bit less yeah like that there's a little bit of body roll too which kind of makes things a little bit more inconsistent let's try reverse entry again i want to see what it feels like all right throw it in yeah this thing's tough to do reverse entries in man it's kind of you have to be really really conservative with your angle on that um, in that regard, I think it feels a lot like the original Euros from the Tuners update, which is good. So those cars are pretty familiar. So if you have drifted that car, you'll kind of feel at home in this one. If anything, I think this one has a bit more power than the normal Euros, if not the same amount of power. Um, but I think the a really good point of comparison is that car. Damn, that snap oversteer really uh, can really affect you. All right, let's get a functional reverse entry now. Uh, a little too put, a little too deep on that one. All right, so let's uh, let's try to enter with a little bit less angle. But yeah, overall, I mean, in terms of, I haven't tested any of the other cars in this DLC yet, so I don't know what they drift like. But uh, I have faith that Rockstar gave us a couple other good drift cars based on some of the ones that we got in the Criminal Enterprise DLC. There's a lot of good drift cars in that update, so I'm hoping that, especially with some of the muscle cars, Rockstar is going to give us. Um, that that will be the case and there will be some other good ones to come out of this update but this car still the 300r even though again it is a little bit more snappy and it doesn't hold a lot of angle it's still as you guys can see it's still a pretty smooth drift car once you get the hang of it i say that and then i spit out but anyways um in terms of driftability uh in, in terms of like a maybe a score out of 10 i'm gonna give this car maybe like a solid 7 out of 10. I think the, the power and everything in the mid-drive speed boost is perfect. Um, however, the um, the limited weight and the lack of momentum to kind of carry you through the corner combined with the pretty snappy nature of this car and the fact that it's hard to hold like really high angle drifts um, really does make it a bit tougher to drift. There we go. Okay. That was decent. Not a massive reverse entry, but it's the just the right amount of angle for us to hold without totally spinning this thing out. Ooh, little wall tap there. But yeah, overall, I mean, this thing, it feels pretty good. It feels good power-wise. It feels pretty consistent handling-wise, except for obviously being a bit snappy. So yeah, I think very well deserving of that 7 out of 10 score. So I'm going to stop it there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little drift build. I know it wasn't super in-depth or anything, but hopefully it was just enough to kind of give you guys the, the quick and dirty about whether or not this car actually drifts and whether or not it's worth drifting. I think this car is worth drifting and is worth, you know, giving a try for yourselves, although it is pretty expensive. Um, just to show you, if you buy it, it's on Legendary Motorsport, by the way, so if you buy it there, $2 million. So you kind of have to decide whether or not that price is up to you. Um, in terms of just for drifting, I wouldn't say this is worth it. There are a lot of other better drift cars you can get for the price, but if you're going to use this for other things, I really don't know its track performance yet. Um, I only really just drifted it, but it seems like a pretty worth it car. I just wish it had a bit more customization. So yeah, boys, that's going to be about it for this little drift build. Again, 7 out of 10. Overall, not that bad. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are having a lot of fun with the update. Take care.